It's a happy and a sad day. It's time to retire the original Photon and unbox the new Anycubic Photon Mono SE. They give us everything we need, starting with our manual and our assembly guide, power cord, the little hex driver for your VAT, the power adapter, and then the package with gloves, mask, your scraper, some more hex keys, screws, the jump drive, and a large scraper for the build plate. So we'll pull off the top styrofoam. It's kind of hard to get the actual printer to pull the printer out, so I have to actually grab the bag and just pull the whole printer out while holding the box. It's probably easier for two people than one, but as I get that off, it's also hard to get the bottom styrofoam off, so I'm going to have to use my foot to hold the styrofoam as I pull it out. And here's what our new machine looks like. The power switch is on the side with the USB port. In the back, there is the power plug-in as well as your Wi-Fi antenna. The side panel that covers your main board. On the bottom, there's the fan as well as the adjustable feet so that you can make sure that your printer is level when you print. On the front, it doesn't have the handle attached, so we will go ahead and attach that from the bag of goodies with the screw provided. The build plate is nestled in the styrofoam underneath, and I'll go ahead and pull that whole thing out of there. The build plate also has a protective film on it. There is also included some filters for your resin. The vat is held in with two screws. You can pull that out. It has a max fill line, which is very helpful. The original Photon did not. We'll go ahead and attach the antenna to the back and compare it to our original Photon. The build plate is relatively the same size. The SE is slightly larger. It is no longer painted or anodized, and there's still a single set screw, but it's in the side as opposed to in the top that allows the entire build plate to move. There is one fan in the bottom of this one, as well as a single rail, whereas on the new one, there is a dual rail system and two fans. Sadly, the SE does not have handles. Apparently, people aren't taking their printers around to their friend's house anymore, but it is considerably heavier than the Photon. So let's go ahead and get it set up and printing. I need to move my Z up so that I can put my build plate on. I'm going to do that at about 10 millimeters at a time and do that until it goes high enough to get the vat out as well as put the build plate back on. There is a protective film on the lighting matrix that I'll go ahead and peel off. And then also remove the one from the build plate before attaching it to the printer. So smooth. There is also a pad on the top. I'm not sure what that's for. It doesn't actually hit the top, so it must be something for the curing station. I don't know. Go ahead and loosen that screw for the build plate so that it can move freely. And then we will be able to go into our settings and home using this handy dandy paper that they gave us. Hit the home button and allow it to come down. Hit the paper and then we're going to make sure that once it's in place that we hold the build plate and make sure that that paper does not come out and then we're going to tighten that screw and after the screw is tightened we will continue to make sure that that paper is secured and doesn't slide out on either side and then we're going to go ahead and say the Z is set to zero and the build plate is now leveled. So once that's done I will move the Z up higher so that I can get my vat back in there and then we'll put some resin in it and get printing. The vat screws are similar to the original Photon where it has the screws on the outside which looks like there's two metal plates and two sets of screws that you would have to use to put your film in there when you change it out. I have a mixture of old resins since I don't have any any cubic resin on me and I'm going to use that. I'm 90% sure that it won't work with the test print that is designed for a different kind of resin, but I will try it anyway, just to show you what it looks like and to show you how to clean up if you make a mess, which I'm going to do. So once it's done, unfortunately there is no cube on it, but there is a small layer where it printed a little bit, but then not the whole thing. So I have to take the scraper and carefully scrape that off. There will also be cured resin in the bottom of the vat that will have to be removed. So I'll have to take the vat out, 
pour it into a container with a filter and then carefully remove that excess resin that's cured to the bottom of our vat that you can see right there. That would have made a really cool cube, but not this time. The plastic scraper that they give you can be used to clean out the vat, but not necessarily scrape the film, but it does not work well for removing cured resin. It doesn't quite get underneath it. So I very carefully use a palette knife that has a better edge on it. And once you're able to get underneath it, it should just peel and slide right out of there. I'll gently wipe out the excess resin, go ahead and put in some new resin and use a new print that I have set for this particular resin so that it will work correctly and go ahead and print our test rook which comes out great just as we expected it get it all cleaned up and it looks really detailed just like it should be it's working so let's go ahead and do some firmware updates because those exist so you should check it and do them when you have them they can be downloaded from the Anycubic website and then you need to go put them on your jump drive and print them in the order that they tell you to apply those firmware updates. And those can take several minutes each, which I don't show the entire time lapse. But while that's happening, I would like to thank you, yes you watching, as well as you patrons, heroes, who support this channel. If you would also like to support this channel, please go to patreon.com forward slash geek happens and sign up for a tier. Get access to some 3D models and discounts at my store, 3dmtabletop.com, where you can get some dice, miniatures, and other Dungeons and Dragons gear that you need for your game. I really appreciate all your support, patrons, as well as viewers. So now that this firmware is almost up to date, you're ready to go. But what would it be if I didn't go over the useless Wi-Fi? I mean, the Wi-Fi features that they have. So we'll go ahead and show you how you're supposed to set that up. There is a manual and files on your jump drive when you plug it into your computer that has all the information you need. There is a Wi-Fi.txt file that you need to make sure that your settings for your Wi-Fi are set in. It is in the Wi-Fi app folder, but I will also move it to the root of the drive so that you can plug it into the printer and then tell it to print that Wi-Fi text file just like you did the firmware updates. It will apply those to the printer and after it does some checking and searching on the IP section, it should give you an IP address and it is connected to your wireless network. Once you have an IP address, you can either use that or do what I did and go into the router and make sure that it gives the same IP address every time, static IP or IP reservation, and then you can use that to connect to the mobile app that allows you to control, I'm using air quotes, your printer. Once we have it installed, we're gonna go into user, add our model, the device name, we're gonna name it Mono SE, enter the IP address that it shows on the display, and then confirm to connect to our printer. And when we're connected to our printer, we're gonna be able to do all sorts of stuff like upload files to it and print and not have to ever look at it. Nope, there's nothing in there because there's no disc plugged in. So once you plug in the disc, then it shows the files. You can only access the files that are on the disc. You can print, you can pause, and you can cancel, and you can see the progress. That is all you can do with this app. So hopefully they will improve functionality. It does work. I can start a print, I can pause the print, I can cancel the print, but I can't upload new files to it or things that would be actually, you know, useful to have it on the network for. Because everything else, I'm pretty much going to have to be at the printer anyway. But now you're fully set up. I hope this video was helpful to you and that you enjoyed it. If so, please click the like button and subscribe to see future videos. Thanks for watching. I think... Now I just have to uninstall this app.